welcome the Holy Spirit to our presence this morning. In the name of Jesus. Let's sing. Jesus, oh, you are the sweetest name of all. light and it gives understanding to the simple. We pray that as your word comes, it will throw light onto our lives. Every darkness in our lives shall be removed by your word, by the entrance of your word. We take control of this place, we subdue every powers and principalities. And we pray that you will work within your people. Let your word come and cause a change. Let power your people for a change. In the name of Jesus Christ, I will pray that given. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So you're talking about anointed for change. Hallelujah. Um, for you to make a difference, you need the power of God. Hallelujah. Uh, it is not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. So it is not your power that is going to make the difference. It's the power of the Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ told his disciples in Acts chapter 1 verse 8. He said that you will receive power after the Holy Spirit has come on you. And you will be my witnesses. From Judea to Jerusalem to the corners of the world. Hallelujah. So why do you need power to become witnesses? You cannot, you know, witness to somebody effectively until you demonstrate the power of the Holy Spirit. Right. And that's why Jesus Christ told them that you have to wait until the power comes on you. Right. We, nowadays, it's not by going to tell somebody Jesus loves you, it's good to tell the person. Mm -hmm. But you see, people have been looking for solutions to their problems. Right. And they require a change in their life. Right. Why you say Jesus loves you, he come and doesn't see any change, you go back. Mm -hmm. And that is why you need the power of God to cause a change. Hallelujah. Yeah. They said that, wait until the power comes on you. Amen. That one you can demonstrate to the people Amen. that this is the power that I'm talking to you about. Amen. You cannot go telling a Muslim or Hindu or somebody, Jesus, so what? What is the difference? Amen. How would we know that there's a difference? Unless so the power, hallelujah. Amen. There's a power that comes through the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And that is what God is going to empower us this morning. Amen. And I tell you, it is the beginning. You don't have to rest. When you start receiving this power, there are different levels of the anointing. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And Amen. therefore, you have to make sure that you move forward. Praise the Lord. Can somebody open to the book of uh, 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 44. God is going to do some wonderful things this morning. I want you to open your heart to receive the word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Let the Holy Spirit talk to you. 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 44 to 46. Um, this word is coming to you, not to everybody, you see. And so don't worry whether people are here or not. They are not supposed to listen. If they were, they'll be here. So make sure that you listen to what God has for you. Mm -hmm. It is for you. You know, there are certain things that are not for everybody. Yes. And you see, that in heaven, it will not be, we are a family in heaven. But we are going to heaven to be individuals. Yes. You have a family here on earth. Right. But it will not be that. So it is individuals. And therefore, this word is coming to you. Amen. It is coming to you as an individual. It's coming to us as a church. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. First Kings chapter... 18 verse 44. First Kings chapter 18. Is anybody there? 
Otherwise, I'm ready. Please, are we there? First yes. Kings 18, 44. 44, yeah. 44 to 46. Okay, I'm ready. The seventh time, the servant reported, a cloud as small as a man's hand is rising from the sea. So Elijah said, go and tell Ahab, hitch up your chariot and go down before the rain stops you. Meanwhile, the sky grew black with clouds. The wind rose, a heavy rain started falling and Ahab rode off to Jezreel. Verse 46. The power of the Lord came on Elijah. Somebody say power. power. The power of the Lord came on Elijah and tucking his cloth into his belt, he ran ahead of Ahab all the way to Jezreel. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You see, when the power of the Lord comes on you, people will be using sophisticated things. People will be using contacts that you don't have. You know, the Ahab is a kid. I think you know the story. That um, Elijah said there won't be any rain until according to my word. And it happened. But you see, there's one thing that we have to learn. I'm not talking about that, but we still have to note it. That it was on the seventh time that the servant said he saw something like a cloud. Sometimes you are not persistent in prayer enough. You see, Elijah has spoken the word three and a half years ago. That until according to my word, there will be no rain nor dew on this land for three and a half years. So by three and a half years, we expect that naturally there should be rain. Amen. But Elijah had to pray again. So what, what, is, what are we learning here? That some of the promises of God, you cannot just sit there and be expecting them. You have to pray persistently to receive them. Elijah had prayed already and indeed the rain has ceased. But when the rain had to come again, he had to pray. It's on the seventh time that they saw something like a small hand in the in the class. Praise the Lord. So don't, you know, give up when you are praying. Be persistent in your prayers, just like Elijah did. And I'm telling you that surely God will show himself strong on your behalf. Amen. There are a lot of people who have gone ahead of you in life. People that you started with. You look at them. They are far ahead of you. There are certain places that you want to go, you cannot see. You think you don't have the contacts. You think that you don't have the strength. But I'm telling you, when the power of God comes on you, you will go and meet them, you will overtake them. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, but the Bible says that Elijah was walking, but by the power of the Lord, by the Spirit of God, he was able to overtake chariots riding. And this chariot is a special chariot for the king. It is not any ordinary chariot. I'm telling you, no matter the sophistication that people have, God's power will let you overtake them. Praise the Lord. Amen. God's power will let you catch them and overtake only if you satisfy the conditions that God is telling us about. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. You know, anytime that you talk about a mountain, we always have to look at Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the altar and finisher of our faith. Hallelujah. Amen. Anytime that we are looking at anything in the Bible, anything in our life, look at Jesus Christ. <laughs> Open to the book of Acts chapter 10, verse 38. We are looking at the purpose of the anointing. Why will God anoint us? For what reason? Why will God anoint us? Acts chapter 10, verse 38. How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit Amen. and power. Amen. And how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil. Mm -hmm. Because God was with him. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now here we understand the reason for the anointing. What you receive, you know, the, the, the power for. And the first thing is to do good. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Doing good. Amen. Now you, know, you will not understand the doing good. Or unless we go to Genesis chapter 1 verse 31. Mm -hmm. We will come back to Acts chapter 10 verse 38. So please, you can put something there. But we have to also look at Genesis chapter 1 verse 31 to understand why Jesus Christ came and he was doing good. So please, we will come back. So don't um, you know, cover that place. We will come back. Let's go to Genesis chapter 1 verse 31. Genesis chapter 1 verse 31. Why did Jesus Christ come to do good? The purpose of the anointed. Verse 31. God saw all he had made, 
and it was very good. Somebody say very good. Very good. God saw all that he had made and it was very good. Now, what changed the state of God's creation such that it was no longer very good? The devil comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Yes. That is the essence of the devil's coming. He comes just to steal, to kill, and to destroy. The devil came to what God had created and he destroyed everything. What God had made in uh, Genesis chapter 1, verse 31, which God said was very good, the devil had destroyed it. Therefore, Jesus Christ came to restore. Hallelujah. Restoration. Number one, the purpose of the anointing is to restore. Hallelujah. When the anointing, God's power comes on you, it comes to restore everything that the devil has taken away from you, destroyed. Because the Bible says that Jesus Christ came because of the anointing. He came to do good. He was doing good. He was doing good because in the beginning, God was doing good. He was doing very good things, but the devil came to destroy it. Hallelujah. So there's a restoration when um, you would uh, receive the power of the Lord. It wasn't so from the beginning. Matthew chapter 19 verse 8. See, Jesus Christ told them something that we have to look at. Today we'll be flipping through the pages. Matthew chapter 19. Matthew chapter 19 verse um, 8. Michael, so when you've opened, you can be reading for me, please. Matthew chapter 19, 19 verse 8. And he said to them, Moses, because of the hardness of your heart, permitted you to divorce your wife, but from the beginning it was not so. Hallelujah. In the beginning, it wasn't so. You see, uh, Jesus Christ is talking about divorce here. But there are a lot of things that are implied from this verse. Jesus Christ is telling them, people were saying, no, so my wife has done this, I want to go and divorce her. No, 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 you see. It wasn't so from the beginning. Mm -hmm. It is because of your hardness that God has allowed you to do that. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of things in your life that were not so from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And they have been changed. Mm -hmm. And that is why God says, when we pray, we should pray that the will of God will be done in our lives, <laughs> as it is in heaven. Mm -hmm. Thy will be done on earth, as it is in heaven. There is a will of God for your life in heaven. But sometimes, the devil comes to change it. So Jesus Christ was telling them, you see, it wasn't so from the beginning. What you are doing, that was not so from the beginning. There are a lot of things about you that have been changed. It wasn't so from the beginning. Amen. Why does Jesus Christ know? Why does Jesus Christ know? Because in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Without him, nothing was made. So he knew from the beginning. He knew that in the beginning it wasn't so. Jesus Christ was there. So there are a lot of things about you that have to be restored by the power of the anointing. Hallelujah. Amen. Because Hallelujah. the state that the devil has put some of us in, it wasn't so from the beginning. In the beginning, it wasn't so. And we will change that by the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. There's a restoration. That's the first thing Jesus Christ is doing good. And we see that in Joel chapter 2 verse 24. Can we open to Joel? Restoration. Chapter 2. Um, verse 24. The anointing comes to restore. Jesus Christ came to start to do good. Hallelujah. And all that the things that the devil had destroyed, Jesus Christ came to restore. So this morning, as God anoints you with his power and his grace, all the good things are going to come back to your life. Yeah. Joel chapter 2, verse 24 to 27. Joel chapter 2, verses 24 to 27. And the Bible says, The threshing floor shall be full of wheat, and the vats shall overflow with new wine and oil. Hold it then, my brother, you continue. You see, there is something about this verse that you have to know very well. There is something about this verse. The verse will flow with new wine and oil. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ said that, take this cup and drink mm -hmm. this wine. This is my blood, mm -hmm. which I'm sharing for you and many. Hallelujah. Amen. The wine represents the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. And the oil, the anointing. Now, you see that the wine comes before the oil. You can never receive the power of God if you've not been cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. He said, there was the wine, freeing of the wine and the blood and the oil. 
You receive the wine to cleanse your blood before you can receive the oil, the anointing, and the power. Hallelujah. Yeah. So we have to note that you cannot be doing the things that you used to do before and still be claiming to have the power of God. You cannot do that. Hallelujah. Yeah. It wasn't so. Yeah. Please continue. Verse 25. So I will restore to you the year that, that the swarming locust has eaten, the crawling locust, the consuming locust, and the chewing locust. Hallelujah. Amen. God says he will restore to you the years that has been destroyed. Look, locust is using a you know, things to tell us what have you seen locusts before? They are destroying people's grains and uh, what they call it, farm and then maize. They are they are just distractors, they destroy things. Mm -hmm. The devil came to destroy. And God is saying that by the power of the anointed, all that has been destroyed by the enemy, he will restore back to you. Hallelujah. Yeah. I pray that God restore to you all that has been destroyed in the name of Jesus Christ by the power of the anointed. Hallelujah. Yeah. Please continue. The chewing locust, my great army which I sent among you. Yes. You shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. Hallelujah. The anointing brings abundance. Hallelujah. The anointing brings plenty. When the anointing comes on you, you have plenty and abundance. You have increase. He said you have plenty and you'll be full. You have to receive this anointing in the name of Jesus Christ. Because he's saying that you will have plenty, abundance, increase, and you'll be full. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, continue. You shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God. Praise the Lord. Amen. You see, the anointing releases praise. There are some people who cannot sing a song. You know, my brother, when you are leading a worship, you wonder why. No, sometimes you also don't know the words. You know? So I think we have to make sure that everybody receives the words so that they can feel part of the worship service. Sometimes people want to really sing, but they don't know the words. But apart from that, some people don't sing because they can't open their mouth. Have you seen somebody who cannot eat before? You see, you, you only appreciate that when you go in yourself or when you've seen that, like a patient, Dr. Karim understand, that they can't eat, they can't open their mouth. And it is not their fault. They cannot open their mouth to sing a song of praise. You wonder why? Because there's no anointing. The Bible is saying that when the power of God comes on you, you will sing praise unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. It is the anointing that gives you the power to sing praise unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. He said you shall sing praise. Continue, please. Sir. And praise the name of the Lord your God who Hallelujah. has dealt wondrously with you. Hallelujah. And my people shall never be put to shame. You see, the anointing re re releases, removes pain, shame. Any shame that the devil wants to bring on your life or has ever brought on your life, by the power of the anointing, it goes away. Hallelujah. May the Lord remove every shame from your life as you receive this anointing in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Please continue. Then you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. You shall know that I am in the midst of, the, of Israel. You know what the anointing also does? It confirms your faith and trust in God. Now, when, when you have anointing, when you have the power, it confirms, you will know that I am the God of Israel. And the Bible says there is no other. There is none. There is no other person but the Lord of Israel. The anointing is what will make you realize and confirm your faith. When you see the power of God demonstrated vividly, you can know that, no, 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 this, there is no other. Pharaoh told the, what do you call it, um, um, what, what, uh, Moses, that this is the finger of God. Hallelujah. Yeah. People will see that this is the finger of God. This, this thing that has happened in your life, sister, brother. You know, this can never happen. You cannot do that. I know you. I know you. But it is the finger of God. Hallelujah. Amen. And it will be seen by everybody. Praise the Lord. Amen. Everybody will see and give glory to Hallelujah. the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you. Can you open to Isaiah chapter 10 verse 27? We are still looking at um, the, the purpose of the anointing. The Bible says that Jesus Christ came. He was doing good and healing all those. Healing. Mm. Healing. You will have healing and you'll be able to also heal when you have the anointed. Praise the Lord. You see, I've told you that people want results. People want solutions to their problems. Mm -hmm. If we don't pray and receive this anointing, mm -hmm. we cannot be attracting people into the house of God. Because they come for solutions to their problems. Mm -hmm. And if they can't receive solutions to their problems, why should they stay? Mm -hmm. They will come and leave. The anointing is what causes healing. Somebody has gone and then Dr. Krabs has told him that, you see, this one, um, we can only give you palliative care. That person comes to Jesus Christ and then he sees a touch of God. Mm -hmm. Why would he go back? This thing which the doctor said that, well, we can only give you pain management. We can't do anything about mm -hmm. And then he has seen that it has changed. Mm -hmm. The situation has changed. It is only the anointing that changes situations in people's life. And once they see that, people, there's no other. They will realize that there's no other God. Hallelujah. And that is why you have to desire. Yesterday we were talking about desire to change. Desire that power to come out of your life. Because 
you need that thing. If you don't get that, you are being wicked. Mm -hmm. Because you need to take that. You are the only person who can access that power. Mm -hmm. Not everybody can access that power. You are the only person who can access that power. And you don't want to access that power to use it for people to heal. So God will see you as a wicked person. Don't be a wicked person. Desire the change. Amen. So that people can see the vivid um, work of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. He's open to um, Isaiah. Is that what you are reading? Was it? Yes, Isaiah 10, 27. Isaiah 10, 27. And it shall come to pass in that day that his burden will be taken away from 